So if you were going down to Hollywood to start an acting career, would mission work be the first thing on your mind? I don't think so. It, it probably wouldn't naturally occur to most people that, uh, hey, this is a mission field, but Hollywood is very much of a mission field. Yes, it and is. And our guest now is Steve Cha, and he's written a book called Hollywood Mission Possible. And it's not about redeeming the movie industry, it's about redeeming people. Yes, it is. <laughs> Welcome to the program, Steve. Steve so oh, happy it's to have so you. so good to have you it's, here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Could you just set the groundwork for us? How did you get involved in acting? Why did you want to do that? And how did you how how did you do that? Well, growing up, I've always wanted to be a film director, and that's the goal that I've chosen since I was in high school, and I worked through even college to try to get to that goal. But unfortunately, things didn't work out, and. I had to actually turn a different route to get into the Hollywood field. So I decided to enter into Hollywood as an actor or background artist so that I can get my foot into the door and kind of get to know the system and get to meet the people to hopefully establish my connections. And it was actually in there in September of 2007 that I met a Christian on the set of a TV show called Life. His name is Jonathan Kahn. And he was going around preaching the gospel to everybody so fearlessly. Now, was he an actor also? Yes, he was. Yeah. And he came up to me and he shared his testimony with me about how he got saved and how the Lord is using him in the mission field to bring the gospel to everybody in Hollywood. He, and he told me about how he even evangelized famous celebrities like Steven Spielberg, Harrison Ford, Dan Aykroyd, and so many other names. And I was just very intrigued and I was very moved and I knew that I was doing something in my life that was not what, what God wanted for me as a Christian, that he wanted me to participate in the Great Commission. That's the calling of all Christians. So he gave me some resources, or Jonathan gave me some resources, and after I took a look at them, which were from the Living Waters Ministry, mm -hmm. Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron's uh, Way of the Master TV right. show. Way of the Master, they can see it here on Cornerstone Television every week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, and after I saw all the material and I saw the full depth of the gospel message, I was really moved. And that changed the whole course of my life. And then from that point on, I wanted to go and do what Jonathan and what Jesus did, which is to go out and preach the gospel to all creation. And ever since then, I've brought the gospel to not only like crew members and background artists, but even to celebrities like Tori Spelling, Brad Pitt, Kiefer Sutherland, Freddie Prince Jr., and the list goes on. Well, tell me how you got started then. What, what, what was your first move in that regard? Well, it's, um, there's, a little, there's different strategies when you go on set, but usually you would just go up to them, approach them, either when you have some downtime during the set or maybe even afterwards when the whole shoot wraps up, and you just introduce yourself, and then you can either start by giving them a gospel tract, which I usually do to break the ice, or you can just casually ask them, do you have a Christian background? Or, what do you think is going to happen you know, when people die? And then from there, people usually open up and start sh sharing what they believe. Now, Just, I, I imagine that the set is not usually the place <laughs> for evangelism. And I imagine that there's a lot of prohibitions on walking up to stars, even if you just want to talk to them, That's true. let alone talking to them, giving them material. What, what was your experience there? Well. I can tell you one story about my evangelism experience with Brad Pitt, and this happened on the movie Moneyball in August of 2010. And I approached Brad Pitt at the end of the day because I wanted to evangelize him, and he was in a rush to really get out of there, so I'm thinking, maybe I should at least give him a tract so that he can read the tract and hopefully get saved, or there will be a seed that's planted. So I gave him one of these um, million dollar bills, and this is the one with Tom Hanks, but there's also one with Brad Pitt on it too. So I just said, hey Brad, here, this is for you, a little tip. And Brad Pitt was looking at it, he was so shocked. He was like, wow, what is this, what is this? <laughs> yeah, then I said to him, well, that's you on the picture. You know, take a look at the message in the back whenever you get a chance. So he says, all right, I definitely will. So then he revved up his golf cart and just went straight back to his dressing room. And I thought everything was great since his po reaction was so positive, but then about a week later, I got a message from my casting agency stating that I got fired, and they wouldn't even tell me the reason why. Oh, wow. yeah. oh my goodness, that's pretty. And uh, you know, that, that's kind of, you were really crossing a, a kind of an invisible line in Hollywood, right? Uh, 
Yes, yes. It just pretty much shows you the, how the gospel is received in Hollywood and what you can expect for sharing your faith, whether it's in Hollywood or in the world. In your experience, are there very many Christians in Hollywood? Are there, are there Christians there? And if, if they're there, are they very active in sharing their faith? Well, there are some Christians there. Of course, there are some Christians. But the question is, are a lot of them real, real Christians? Are they actually going out and doing what God commands them to do, which is to seek and save the lost? And based on my observation, I haven't really seen too many people going around sharing their faith except Jonathan Kahn, who I met and who influenced me. And I do know that there are a few people working behind the stages trying to get that done. But as of right now, that's what I'm trying to do is to encourage more people to step up and boldly share their faith so that more celebrities and just everybody in Hollywood can be saved. Well, uh, tell us about what your book is, Hollywood Mission Possible. What, what, uh, what, is, it, what is it about? Hollywood Mission Possible is pretty much an autobiography about my life as a missionary in Hollywood and a little bit about my upbringing, but mostly about my life and about how I went around preaching the gospel to all these famous celebrities, shared stories from all these names that I just listed previously, and to use it as a platform to inspire Christians on how to evangelize themselves, to set a model and a structure to show them how to conquer fear, how to equip themselves to actually know what to say to these people and how to approach them to share the gospel. You know what I love about it is, is it's almost like a, another country that doesn't allow the gospel or something. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's this people group, this unreached people group, these celebrities. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm yes. sure you've witnessed to the, your coworkers and extras and people as well, but there's this, like, you know, this invisible wall that says, don't go here. Yes. But they're people too. They need the gospel. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to talk a, a, a little bit more with Steve after a short break, and we're going to talk about how does a Christian begin witnessing? Because, you know, maybe we're not all in Hollywood, but we're all called to participate in the Great Commission. Stay tuned. We've had a wonderful time talking with Stephen Shaw about a book, Mission Possible. And I want you to know that this is a Hollywood story. This is a gentleman who's really enjoyed doing the Lord's work in a place where it's a, it's a real missionary place, Hollywood. And so I would like to ask you, Stephen, what most, most Christians do have trouble witnessing. Why is that? What, what's the problem with us? Well, they say that the two main reasons that Christians have problem witnessing is number one is fear, and number two, they just don't know what to say. They're, they're not equipped. And fear is a very real issue that I've struggled with throughout my life. And even right now, fear is something that we will all struggle with as Christians to share our faith because we anticipate the insults, the persecution, and possibly even death in the worst case scenario. So fear is something that you just have to pray to the Lord about to lift from your heart and to be so filled with the love of the gospel that it will just help you overcome your fear so that you can just dive into the water and just bring that gospel message to somebody. And of course, you do need to get trained in the word too so that you'll know what to say to these people, not saying things that are wrong or heretical, obviously. <laughs> it's important. Well, you know, do you think like really catching a vision of how God sees things really helps? Like really understanding that, hey, this is for eternity. This isn't just, this isn't just a nice thing to do to go to church. This, this decides where we spend eternity. Yes. A, the issue of eternity is a very, very real issue that we have to all think about as Christians. And that's why we evangelize people was so that they can get saved because one day like the bible says that we're all going to stand before god we're going to get judged for all the times that we have transgressed his law and if we are guilty we'll end up in 
hell or the lake of fire forever. And if that's a very big reality, if that's really going to happen, then we have to really have a sense of urgency to reach out to the lost, to do with fervency and passion so that we can pull them from that road that's leading to destruction. And that's one of the main factors that should motivate all of us Christians every day, whether it be with family, friends, or even strangers we meet all around. You know, um, that word witness is a big word. Yes. And it has a lot of fear and trepidation to it, as you were saying. But also, you could witness to someone by your very life, can't you? Well, there's a sense of using your life as a testimony in terms of being salt and light to individuals, to the community, but your life itself will not get forth the gospel because people will not understand the gospel just by looking at your life. They'll think you're a nice guy, possibly. Mm -hmm. They'll think that you're well-mannered, but they won't really see what exactly it is that um, you have to offer, really, that makes you distinguishable. And that's when you actually have to open your mouth or at least give them some form of communication to get the message to them so that they can have the opportunity to respond to that gospel message. And hopefully, if they come to repentance and faith and they become born again, that the Holy Spirit will enter into their lives and to change them and to make them into that same person as well in Christ likeness. You know, I've always thought that. I've heard people say before, well, you know, I just want to live the life. I want to live the life of Christ in front of people and really demonstrate the gospel. And absolutely, we should do that. But it, you're right. It doesn't, there's, they're not going to connect that until we open up our mouth and say something about Christ and about the gospel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is one of the issues that you'll deal with a lot of times in the churches is that people are afraid to witness very boldly to people and they'll say that I'll just witness with my life but that's another way of saying I don't want to witness to them. Yeah, I'm too chicken to talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly.